A very good evening to one and all present here. I'm Prarthana Paya, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to FFE's virtual open house for the year 2122. When we started the virtual meets last year, little did we know that this platform will be our new normal. The past one year, one year has tested the entire human race in various degrees, from throwing unforeseen and unimaginable challenges in front of us to appending our lives and causing irreparable damage. And yet, this universal tragedy could not shake the highest form of human spirit, that of optimism. While we have learned several lessons from this crisis, one of the most important one is that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And on that note, I would like to begin today's event by welcoming our esteemed donors, guests, students, facilitators, alumni, and mentors to FFE's fifth virtual open house event for the states of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. I would now like to invite FFE's managing trustee, Dr. Sudha Kidao, to address the gathering. Dr. Sudha has been volunteering with FFE now for more than a decade, first in the USA and from 2010 in India, beginning with the establishment of FFE's office in Bangalore. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sudha. Over to you, Sudha. Thank you, Prathana. And good evening, everyone. It is my absolute privilege, pleasure, and honor to welcome all of you uh, to this open house. I'm delighted to see that we have already over 700 participants. And this is really very encouraging. As Prathana mentioned, uh, we had to move to virtual open house events because of the pandemic. But that has been the silver lining for us, where we have been able to meet a far larger number of all of you, students, alumni, our donors, our partners, because while we would like to meet, meet you all in person, uh, even in the best of circumstances, we may have been able to meet about 200 or 300 of you in Chennai. But this gives us an opportunity for, for us all to gather together. So thank you for making uh, your participation in this open house happen this evening and making this a priority. This has been a difficult year and so has the last year uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, while FFE has awarded more scholarships than ever before to most students in all our 27 years of existence, we are also very sorry that we lost a few members of this large FFE family. We lost three students to the pandemic. Several students have let us know that they have lost a parent. We have lost five very valuable volunteers as well. We mourn the loss of each of those lives, but we are thankful that they were part of our family and we will cherish the time that we had with them. With that, I'd like to move on uh, and start with a presentation about the Foundation for Excellence. Uh, I'm very happy today that we also have our keynote speaker, Mr. Sumit Mitra from Tesco, who you'll all hear from in a few minutes. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Mitra for being with us this evening. The Foundation for Excellence, um, as you all know, has been uh, in existence for 27 years. Next slide, please. And what do we do? Our mission is very simple, to help students like all of you, very accomplished, academically gifted, and have gotten to the best colleges, but have a little problem uh, paying uh, your fees and education related expenses. And the mission of the foundation is to help students like you all achieve your dreams of higher education. Next slide, please. And how are we doing this? It's through our merit and means scholarship. I want to congratulate all of you students. Um, all of you are here are students who are getting us the scholarship from the foundation for, from, uh, 
from the Foundation for Excellence for the last two, three, four, and even maybe a final year of college. Congratulations to all of you, because this is a scholarship that everybody wants. Um, these are for uh, in four areas of study. Uh, we have uh, we started with engineering and medicine. And in 2019, when we celebrated our 25th anniversary, we added B Farm as well as law. And one important aspect of our work is to stay connected with each of you students while you are students and after you graduate as alumni. Please remember that you are the leaders, the next generation leaders of this organization. And this is yours to help grow, expand, and create larger impact. Next slide, please. Uh, a brief history of the organization. It was started by uh, a visionary, Dr. Prabhu Goel, who's an engineer by profession and training. You'll hear more about Dr. Prabhu Goel uh, in a few minutes. So Dr. Prabhu Goel and his wife, Mrs. Poonam Goel, started the Foundation for Excellence in 1994, and it started in the US. Very soon, we had a large number of students who got scholarships, did very well, and wanted to give back to the foundation. And they had no way of doing it. And so the Foundation for Excellence India Trust began in 2003. I'm really, really proud that the first donations to FFE India Trust came from our very own alumni. And I'm really grateful, thankful, and truly proud of our alumni, because very soon you'll know about their numerous contributions to FFE so far. We are very happy that uh, until 2021, we have helped over 25,000 students complete their education in 27 states in India. Next slide, please. FFE India Trust is governed uh, by a board of trustees, and we work very closely with uh, the parent organization, FFE USA, and the board of FFE US. Uh, as you all know, it is a registered trust. We accept donations from all over the world because we have all our certifications in place. Um, and we have a very eminent board of trustees, including Dr. Rishi Krishnan, uh, who's the director of IM Bangalore. We have Smita Uttarwar, who's an entrepreneur based in Mumbai. Uh, Mr. Venk Shukla, who was the first president of FFE, and he's had a, the, a, the longest association since the inception of FFE. And Mr. Arun Kumar, who is a chairman and CEO of KPMG India. And uh, the board is responsible for governance, finances, and the general operations of the trust. Next slide, please. Uh, what does FFE India Trust do? Uh, you all would have connected uh, with someone from FFE India Trust uh, during uh, the time you are a student, and that will continue um, after you graduate and become alumni because a trust does numerous things. Um, we are involved in running the scholarship program, uh, which means awarding the scholarships to all of you students in time. We uh, also conduct the skills training program and the mentoring program, which all of you must participate in. Uh, we manage the large community of scholars, the growing community of alumni, and our large and expanding volunteer network all over India. Uh, we raise funds, uh, in order to conduct and run the various programs. We conduct events like this. I want to tell you that last year we met over 5,000 students and all our stakeholders through these virtual events. And we hope we'll meet 7,000 of them this year. And we conduct any kind of outreach activity so that more and more people know about the foundation and can apply for scholarships. We, we make this all possible through the support of over 40 corporates, thousands of individuals, 500 volunteers, and growing, and different charitable trusts and foundations who support the various programs, for example, the skills training program. The next slide, please. Uh, and all of you are familiar with this, the eligibility for scholarships, a very good rank in any of the tests, the nationalized tests that you all do for engineering, medical, law, and B farm. And uh, we have a family income cutoff for which you all qualified. I know and I'm proud that many of you are the first in your families to go to college and do so well. So very proud of you. And we know you all have a really bright future. Next slide, please. 
We are very grateful for our large network of volunteers. We have over 500 of them and that number continues to grow. They are all over India. Um, all of you students are connected to a volunteer. We are very grateful for their work and we, we encourage all of you to stay in touch with your facilitator several times during the year because they, play, uh, they can play a very important role in your future as well. Next slide, please. Where are we today? I am really proud that today FFE is the largest scholarship granting organization in the higher education space in India in over 27 states. And look at how we have grown. We have grown steadily. Uh, last year, um, we ended with 7498 students being helped through the Merit and Means Scholarships. Uh, we have awarded over 71,000 scholarships to date. And uh, this amounts to over 228 crores over the 27 years of FFE's existence. Next slide, please. How did we do with regard to scholarships last year? In, despite the pandemic, our donors have been most generous and we awarded the largest number of scholarships until date. Uh, you can see that we continue to support more men than women, 77% are men. We are very keen to bring up the number of women that we support to over 30% and hopefully over time to 50%. Um, we are supporting larger number of engineering students. 69% of our students are engineering students and 28% um, are women. Uh, I'm sorry, 28% uh, are medical students. And you can see we have smaller number of students who are now in, in the integrated MTech in law and B farm. Law and bee farm are, of course, new courses that we introduced. And I, as I mentioned, uh, we ended last year with close to 7,500 scholarships. We welcomed 2,422 new students into the FFE family. So welcome all of you second year students. And we awarded close to 30 crores in scholarships last year. Next slide, please. Uh, I'd like to, at this point, uh, pass on the presentation uh, to Ram Kolavenu. He is the COO of FFE India Trust. And Ram uh, joined FFE uh, eight months ago. He comes with over 22 years of experience um, working in, in the corporate sector. He's also worked in the social enterprise space. Ram is an engineer with an MBA, and we're delighted to have Ram join the Foundation for Excellence. And I'd like to pass on the presentation to Ram, who will continue to tell you about the various achievements of FFE. Thank you all. Thank you, Sudha. Good evening, everyone. Ram, uh, over to you. Thank you, Sudha. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's been a phenomenal eight months journey. Uh, it's very uh, uh, satisfying to see more and more of deserving scholars uh, getting the scholarship. You've seen the growth which has happened in the last few years um, is really, really satisfying. So I would really like to congratulate all our new 211 scholars who have joined in uh, this year in FFA scholarship program. Congratulations to you. It's uh, hard, you've done the, all the hard work to, to crack these difficult examinations and be part of uh, this institute you should be very proud of. I also would like to congratulate uh, the uh, graduates who are uh, graduating now. Uh, very, very heartening to see. There's no nothing more satisfying to see you getting out with flying colors. 84% of you already landed in job in good jobs and actually started um, uh, your career as well. So congratulations to you and uh, welcome to the new uh, uh, new scholars to the FFE family. So if you see, uh, uh, Tamil Nadu has always been uh, the highest in, in terms of applications coming in and very, very nice to see the number of uh, the percentage of women, uh, female scholars who are applying for scholarships. I thank uh, the, all the facilitators for, for your relentless work in identifying these scholars and would urge you to continue to do that in the coming years as well. As you see, we have spread across the different parts of the country, but uh, very strong in Tamil Nadu and would want to see it getting stronger and stronger every passing year. The next slide, please. So a couple of things which I wanted to touch base on. I think uh, all of you who have got the scholarship there, we are in a different, uh, a a different phases of the journey from your, uh, from your education perspective, second, third, fourth, fifth years. 
So one of the things which we started five, six years back and some alumni who was part of this, uh, you know, open house sessions today uh, may not have gone through that. But last five years, we have started off with a beyond scholarship program, which includes actually imparting some of the skills which are not taught in the colleges and also to see how we can actually get you closer to what uh, what industry is looking at so the beyond scholarship program which includes the you know uh, the training programs as well as the mentoring programs are so critical i would urge all of you scholars to be able to actually make the full benefit out of that the soft skills program which starts at the end of the first year all of you have actually gone through the uh, you know as a, uh, the amcat assessment pro and uh, started to do english analytical logical and some of you are into the technical programs so make the full uh, use of these uh, training programs because that we've seen there's a huge correlation between the way you are actually performing in these and then the kind of a jobs which you are landing up there the next slide please so uh, a snapshot of how the uh, you know beyond scholarship program is looking for uh, for this is how the uh, engineering bpom and law students are going through and we are going to stitch something together for uh, the mbbs students as well in the coming years so we have started to do something we want to do much more for even the medical students so as you see uh, you are in a different phase of journey the thing which we have added uh, now in the last couple of years uh, is the mentorship program the mentorship program, uh, next slide please, is, is I mean, uh, we started about uh, three years back with a small group of 50 students where we've actually brought them along with uh, industry mentors, uh, um, the industry, uh, someone who has experience of more than five years, been in industry. I think that's taken a new shape altogether. We have more and more uh, corporates and volunteers coming to be part of the mentors. Uh, by last year, we did about 400. I'm so happy to see that uh, this year, we want to touch the 1,000 numbers, and we already have 700 of you in the third years uh, engineering, uh, B-Pharma, and law students have already signed up for mentoring program and started your mentorship. So I would urge, if you have not already done, uh, to be able to just go ahead and start you know, enrolling yourselves for the mentoring program and sign up for that. So... Um, <clears throat> The other significant difference between what we do at FFE and probably uh, doesn't exist anywhere in the world is to be able to see how we can make this entire initiative sustainable. And I can't thank uh, uh, the alumni enough uh, to be able to start getting very, very strong in the circle of giving. The last few years, we've seen a multi-proportional growth in the way you're contributing back to um, back to FFE and then the society. And with your help, I mean, uh, we will be able to uh, make this a sustainable one and actually start to reach out to uh, more and more uh, scholars. Next slide. So last year, if you see, we've actually got uh, 1,300 plus uh, alumni directly contributing to FFE. And there are several more who are actually raised fund indirectly as well through their corporates. So to the extent of about uh, 12 to 13% of our scholarship, which was dispersed last year, it literally came from alumni. So thank you uh, for contributing and looking forward to many of other alumni to be able to uh, you know, follow the foot, same footsteps so that we can make it larger and very, very sustainable program. So, this, so the ones who are graduating now are in the journey. This is, as Sudha has mentioned, FFE is your organization. Let's all work together to be able to see how we can make it uh, larger and being more. So for the uh, students who are currently in studies, I would uh, urge you to start spreading the word to see uh, more and more deserving students start applying for scholarship this year as well. And I would like to see more and more of uh, female scholars, uh, scholarship applications as well. Our alumni is spread across the world, and I'm so glad to, that they're all connected very well. And then we've been having various uh, different uh, programs, uh, initiatives with them uh, uh, to actually see how we can actually make uh, the center program. Some of the skilling and other initiatives are brainchilds of the alumni as well. The next slide, please. We continue to be recognized as the best uh, in this space, and uh, I, I, we always believe that to do, do the right things, and then things, uh, the rewards and recognitions would follow us anyway. Uh, next slide, please. The, another important aspect uh, in the last year, being a uh, tough year from a pandemic perspective as well, we have seen increased number of corporates actually signing up to help and support uh, the needy students. This is very heartening to be able to see uh, when a lot of these funds have been channelized towards COVID support, to be able to see about a 17% growth in the scholarships itself uh, a test is a testimony of how this program is so critical uh, to the entire journey. And we are seeing more and more of this, uh, uh, these corporates coming, just not doing your support from a uh, from donor donation perspective, being part of the mentoring, 
being part of uh, you know the providing some of the uh, webinars which are for uh, contemporary uh, uh, contemporary subjects we uh, we continue to have multiple foundations showing our interest and uh, some of you who are here I would really extend my thanks for uh, doing this behind all this um, is this team now uh, you must have interacted with uh, some or all of these people the donor relationships team the scholarship team and then the alumni team so thank you everyone uh, uh, for being part of the uh, this, uh, journey this evening and uh, looking forward to interacting with you in the coming time thank you prathna over to you thank you aram and uh, thank you sudha as well i request the participants to please use the q and a box to post any questions you may have we will have a q and a session at the end of this event moving on uh, today not only do we have our stakeholders from across india but we also have a special message from ffe's founder dr prabhu goel who is currently in the us an iit kanpur alumnus and the recipient of the president's gold medal for academic excellence Dr Goel received a PhD in electrical engineering from Carnegie Mellon University. Dr Prabhu and his wife Mrs Poonam Goel established the Foundation for Excellence in 1994. Dr Goel started his career with management and technical positions at IBM and over time he has served on the board of directors of many private and public companies. Let us now listen to Dr Prabhu Goel's message. Hello everyone. A specially warm welcome to our honored guests, our donors, our mentors, our facilitators. And a warm welcome to our FFE scholars and the FFE India team that has put this event together. I want to start by acknowledging the difficult last 12 months that all of you over there have gone through the two waves of covid and what it has done to the country and to all of us in a small way ffe has tried to help the ffe scholars and their families by raising emergency funds in both the first and the second wave though the losses that people have experienced are unimaginable and i hope that india avoids a third wave and gets and is better prepared going forward coming back to the open house i think i want to bring out the fact that the india team has done a the ffe india team has done a remarkable job in putting together training programs uh mentoring skilling uh etc that has helped made a major difference in the employability of our scholars in the year 19 2019 to 2020 over 90% of our scholars found jobs or went on for higher education i think that's remarkable don't you think so and this year from 2020 to 2021 the employment rate is significantly better than what one would expect in this time frame and i think we expect to do as well as the prior year So thank you to the FFE India team. And I want to use this opportunity to remind the FFE scholars that they must take full advantage of all the programs that have been put together for them. The training, uh, the skilling programs, the mentoring programs, all the training that comes along with it uh, as far as interviewing uh, and various other uh, courses that we offer, entrepreneurship etc to be able to maximize what they get out of the organization and employ it in their professional careers i would also welcome our donors facilitators as well as mentors to please join these programs and make these programs even more successful i think that would be very very welcome i want to also point out that the ffe scholars and alumni have done an incredible job in the last 12 months or the previous uh, 12 months 1920 in raising funds from their corporates and it's almost the, it's almost they have doubled the amount of money that they raised in a single year from the year prior i think that's a fantastic way to give back and i encourage that and i applaud the ffe scholars for that 
going forward, I think it's very important for the FFE scholars to stay connected with FFE and to the alumni, to each other, because this is a network of over 10,000 people that, that has a lot of power in this network. When you work with each other, you can actually be thinking about taking advantage of this network for getting great advice, for finding new jobs, references, uh, uh, references to job openings that might be out there, uh, references to uh, career counseling, uh, new opportunities that you might be looking for, because this is how the network works. People in the network are very valuable because there's no other way you can get this kind of information and advice. So I would strongly encourage you to stay connected with the alumni network and leverage it and give into it as well. Again, I would like to end by saying, I hope you all have a wonderful open house today. And I thank all our guests for being here to make this event successful. And I hope our FFE scholars go back and say it was very worthwhile. Thank you. A wonderful and inspiring message from FFE's founder, Dr. Prabhu Goel there. We are delighted to have with us today, Mr. Sumit Mitra, CEO of Tesco Business Services and Tesco Bengaluru as our keynote speaker for this evening. Mr. Sumit is a strategic thinker experienced in leading organizations to achieve business turnaround by executing complex strategic plans across multiple geographies through his unique ability to join the dots in a multinational environment. He is also a board member of Tesco's joint venture, Trent Hypermarkets, with the Tata Group. Prior to joining Tesco, Mr. Sumit was the managing director of British Telecom, where he conceptualized and executed BT's global business services model with direct responsibility for 10,000 plus employees across nine countries and several third party vendors. Mr. Sumit is passionate about employer branding, people, and helping teams succeed by leading and creating a culture that inspires people to strive for excellence. Mr. Sumit studied in Scotland and has a Bachelor of Medical Science degree and a Master's in Business Administration. He has also completed the Global Strategic Management Program from Harvard Business School in Boston and has received an honorary doctorate in Management Excellence. Mr. Sumit loves sports. He holds a cricket coaching diploma from the England and Wales Cricket Board and is an expert in martial arts. He's a passionate Manchester United supporter, loves traveling and enjoys spending time with his two daughters. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Sumit Mitra. Over to you, Mr. Sumit. Thank you, Prathana. Real pleasure and, and real honor to be here today and uh, hearing Dr. Sudha and Ram speak about the fantastic work that has been done over the last so many years, and especially during the pandemic this year, over seven and a half thousand scholarships. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic and phenomenal. Uh, and, and I feel extremely privileged uh, to be here today and to address the students. And I want a big shout out for Ram. Um, I believe he's an ex Tescoite. So great to great to see him uh, doing well and 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 supporting this great cause. So thanks, Ram. Um, I got to sh I've got a couple of slides to share. So if I can share my slides, if you don't mind. Uh, there you go. Let me know if you can see it. Can you yes, see Mr. Sumit. Yes, yeah. we can see it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. So basically what I wanted to talk to you today about, I know you are probably bored with lectures and, and, and number of topics that you talk about at university. So today I thought I'll give you a little practical experience of life and talk to you a little bit about my journey in terms of how do you create a differentiator for yourself and how do you create that competitive advantage for yourself in the corporate world. So if you think about every year India produces between six to 8 million graduates, and that's just India. If you think globally, you're talking millions. And in terms of those millions, how do you create yourself a differentiator to ensure that 
you're different to the rest so that you can create a better career, a better prospect, a better opportunity for yourself and build a better future. Degree, for me, it's a discipline. What it does give you, it's a discipline. It helps you to uh, manage your diary. It helps you to manage uh, your uh, academia. It helps you manage um, your time. Um, it helps you project manage. But what it does not do is make you ready for the real world. And today I'm going to talk about my little journey in terms of how I've dealt with and create, created a little bit of differentiator my, for myself uh, in the industry. Okay, so let me start my journey. So who am I? I was born in Kolkata um, many, many years ago. I went to a school in Kolkata. I left uh, India at the age of 16, went to United Kingdom. Uh, I studied in Edinburgh, Scotland. That's where I studied medicine to be a doctor. Um, and I did five years of medicine and decided not to practice as a doctor. And I went and did a master's degree in, in business administration uh, with special paper in corporate strategy in University of Dundee. Then I did a diploma in Harvard Business School sponsored by British Telecom uh, on international strat strategic management. Like I said, I also have an honorary doctorate from uh, YSC in US. Um, I'm also a fellow of Started Institute of Management. And then I have two daughters who is 12 and 15, and I love cricket and football. I love playing cricket. Uh, I love watching football. And, and as you heard, I love watching Manchester United. And then finally, I am a double black belt in martial art, one in Aikido and one in Taekwondo. Now, when you read through this, when I'm talking about this, you instantly create a stereotype in your head. And you think this boy must have um, born with a silver spoon in his mouth. His father was extremely rich. Uh, his father sent him to uh, UK, funded all his education. What is he complaining about? And what journey does he really have? So let me talk a little bit about my journey of life. So in the 70s and 80s, dowry was a big thing in India. And my mother was a big victim of dowry. And my um, parents split up when I was, I think, six or seven years old. And it was a very lonely childhood in terms of my mother doing all sorts of different odd jobs to ensure that I, I survived with the support, a little support from my grandfather. That created a lot of uh, problems for us when our grandfather and my grandmother expired because I was living with, with them. And some days I struggled to find um, bread for breakfast. So that put you in crossroads. That made you think in terms of how do you want to build? You could either lay all your tools down and, and think why all this thing happens to me. I have a big house. I have a my, I'm living in my grandfather's house, but I have no money. And why does things always, why did my father and my family have to do what they had to do with my mother? Why did I have to uh, go through all this? Whilst I see around me uh, a lot of um, people having a great life and have a, a nice robust family. You could either think yourself as a victim or you think about self as I'm gonna defy all odds and fight through this and prove it to the whole world that I can make a difference and I can do something different. So my mom, whatever jewelry was left, sold it and funded my trip to UK where I got a scholarship and did my high secondary from the UK. My parents did not, uh, as you know, my mother couldn't afford to pay, spend any more other than my flight tickets. And then I got scholarships to study medicine and I studied medicine and then I realized it wasn't my cause. So let me talk you through my journey. As I said, there's lots of ups, lots of downs. So to fund my education when I was studying medicine, I um, studied as a waiter in a in number of restaurants where I would uh, chop tomatoes, peel onions. And then I realized to earn big bucks, I need to go into the kitchen and try and learn to be a chef. So I became a chef and learned how to cook. And that gave me more salary in hand, which helped me fund my, because I was only getting 50% scholarship, which meant that 50% of my scholar, you know, fees had to be funded. And I funded through being a chef. 
Then while I was at a chef, I managed to, uh, to cut a long story short, I managed to work with a company and acquire a, a, a small restaurant, an Indian restaurant. You can still look up on the internet. It is called the Indian Cavalry Club. It was the original Indian Cavalry Club. It was set up in Edinburgh. And I was the head chef as well as I own 25% of the restaurant. Then um, I graduated to be a doctor. Um, that was me in 96, 97. And then I started my MBA. Uh, I'm not wearing a skirt, by the way. It's called a Scottish kilt. Um, so I wore kind of Scottish national dress uh, when I graduated uh, from, from MBA. I sold my uh, stake in the restaurant to fund my MBA because MBA those days was very, very expensive and there was no scholarship available. When I passed medicine, I uh, wanted to do something different. I felt my purpose and calling was something different. It was a very strange thing to do. My parents, uh, my, my mother and my uh, maternal family, they all thought I was either having a nervous breakdown or smoking something really funny uh, to leave medicine and, and do an MBA. So I did an MBA and then I joined BT as a graduate and I did a number of roles from marketing, sales, strategy, finance, uh, and ended up becoming a, a, a business leader, a business leader. Um, and I became the youngest managing director in, in, in BT and one of the first Indian uh, to be a managing director in BT. So it was a real honor. And, and, and today I work for Tesco. Uh, it's been four years now and the journey has been, has been superb. If I look back, I think, you know, um, learning as a chef, learning to multitask, being a waiter, uh, being an entrepreneur and a businessman, understanding the PNL, being a doctor taught me empathy, how to uh, put yourself into other people's shoes. Uh, being an MBA taught, taught me strategic direction. Uh, going to Harvard get me a, gave me a very global perspective of things. And that uh, made me the business leader that I am today. So as I say, nothing is wasted. And my work gave me a real privilege to travel different parts of the world. I worked in the UK, I worked in China, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, US, Latin America, uh, Europe. Uh, and it was a real pleasure to work in these countries and, and have a real feel for the culture of, of those organizations and, and, and culture for, for, for the country as well. And that made me the global leader that, that I am today. So what are the, the, the recipes for success? First of all, my first point is be humble and be thankful. When I wake up in the morning, I look up and I see I have a roof over my head. I'm thankful to God, thankful to my mentors, thankful to all the supporters who've supported me that I have a roof over my head. When I go downstairs in my kitchen, I open my fridge, I see my fridge is full of food. And I thank my lucky stars that I have food to eat. Then I go out, I see I have a car parked in my driveway and I can sit in the car and go to work. Thank God I have a car and I can go to work. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. What is it I have to complain about? I think sometimes in life, we complain about things that we don't have, but we don't always appreciate what we have. So be humble and be thankful for what you have. The second point is build breath and add variety. Variety is the spice of life. Add variety to your CV. Make sure, you know, my experience in BT, moving from marketing to sales, to strategy, to engineering, to technology. So all these different jobs gave me variety. And that variety helped me to build and become the leader I am today. The third point is enjoy what you do. I promise you, if you enjoy what you do, when you get up in the morning and you feel, yes, I want to get to work. I enjoy what I'm doing. This is my purpose of life. You, I promise you, you will never work a single day in your life because work will be fun for you. And the third one, as I said before, when you saw my name and my qualifications, you judged me. You thought this guy was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. So my ask to you is, Never judge, never judge a book by its cover. Never judge a person. Make sure you try and put yourself into other people's shoes. 
especially during this pandemic, people say that we are all in the same storm. We are all in the same boat. I always say we are in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat because everybody is sitting on a different boat because everybody's problems are different. So don't judge individuals with a big paintbrush. Just make sure you treat people how they would like to be treated and make sure you don't judge people. So these are my four uh, key tips. And then finally, um, the last slide I have, this is the mantra I've always had, is that life's battles are not won by the, you know, the bravest, cleverest, or the smartest. It's won by people who believe they can win. I was never the bravest person. I was never the cleverest person in my class. Neither I was the smartest. But I always had the determination, the will to win. Because if you have that, if you have that hunger to succeed, nothing will stop you and nothing is impossible. Look at things in a positive way. I, the reason I put a picture of a glass is you can look at the glass and say the glass is half empty. But I will always look at the glass and say the glass is half full. Positivity breeds positivity. So be positive in your life. Make sure you have the drive, the hunger to make a difference. Make sure you find your purpose in your life. That's really important. Why do you exist? What is it you want to contribute to the society? What is it you want to do? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? And make sure above all this, be humble. Thank you very much for your time. And it's lovely to see you. You will find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Reach out to me if you have any further questions. Over to you guys, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sumit, uh, for this motivating and inspiring message and for your time to be with us this evening. I'm sure you also have a lot of Manchester United fans in this uh, crowd today. So apart from this, Tesco has also been supporting FFE through the scholarship and mentorship programs, and we are extremely thankful uh, for this. We definitely hope this partnership will grow and um, strengthen in the, in the future. Thank you once again. I will, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sumit. Thank you. All right. Uh, participants, a gentle reminder to please continue posting your questions in the Q&A box. FFE has been extremely fortunate to be backed by a team of highly motivated and dedicated facilitators who have been helping FFE through their tireless efforts and voluntary services. Today, we have with us two video messages from our facilitators, Mr. Hariharan Ayer and Mr. T. Srinivasan from Tamil Nadu. Can we have their videos, please? Good evening, everyone. I am Hariharan, a facilitator from Tamil Nadu. Earlier, I was in Mumbai. Firstly, I thank Sri M. Rekubadi, my mentor and well-wisher for introducing and enrolling me to for Foundation for Excellence around two decades back. As a facilitator, it gives me an opportunity to serve the society in a small way by helping the needy students in continuing their study. This also gives me immense pressure for contributing to the national building. I consider this is my BSR, personal social responsibility. When I started as a facilitator, the enrollment was for students studying 8th, 9th, and 10th standard. It was not so easy to find out the students fitting to the guideline and criteria given by the FFE. I started approaching many nearby schools and met the headmasters, admissioners for schools and explained the scheme. Finally, I got one school to get one student studying 8th standard fitting to the criteria of FFE. Then slowly I started getting references from schools and also friends. Many of the students were so poor, staying in hutments in slum area, for them I used to bear the cost of copying the necessary documents and reaching it to FFE. But it was a satisfying experience, I am proud of that. Now with online application, online verification, the interaction with students and their parents become more effective and more comfortable. This is a different experience. I really appreciate the team FFE at Bangalore. They are very clear and in communication and excellent in coordination. Finally, I thank FFE organization for giving this opportunity to speak to you. Jai Hind. 
Good morning, everybody. It's a privilege talking to all of you, the FFE fraternity. Uh, are my grateful thanks to the founder, uh, Prabhu Goyal, Madam Poonam Goyal, uh, Madam Sudha Kidao, uh, the officials of the uh, FFE, the donors, the scholars, and uh, uh, the alumni, everyone. Uh, uh, I wish you a great day today. It's, it's, a, it's a great occasion uh, that uh, FFE is able to celebrate a virtual open house uh, with uh, so many of the people attending the function. Um, I have been uh, associated with FFE for over 21 years now uh, in its total journey of uh, 27 years. Uh, I've seen uh, the growth of FFE and uh, service growing in uh, leaps and bounds uh, and uh, uh, today I, it's, it's very satisfying and uh, nice to know that over 70,000 people have been helped and over 200 crores of uh, scholarship amount ha has been dispersed. Uh, I, uh, it's, it's, as a facilitator, it's so satisfying and gratifying to see the scholars coming from poor background, you know, making the grade and becoming very, very successful. I just want, I just want to uh, talk about some one or two uh, of my students who have made it to, uh, you know, a very big levels. His name is Velu Sami, and you know, he uh, did his engineering. He comes uh, from a farming family uh, from Karur, and you know, he had to be helped by his. Uh, uh, uncle to be doing, I mean, uh, to pursue his studies, and then he, uh, after passing out, got a appointment with Honeywell, and he went to Switzerland uh, to work with Nestle, and came back, and of course he is now uh, an entrepreneur. You know, he is uh, he's, he's got a startup, and you know, and I must also mention here. After passing out within about three years of his getting into a career, he donated a sum of rupees four lakhs to the FFE, and I think by far he is perhaps the largest, uh, you know, scholar donor for FFE. And uh, last but not the least, I would like to talk about one Minal Kodi, who comes from Salem, uh, a village near Salem, uh, from a weaver's family, very poor family, and she passed her. MBBS very successfully thanks to FFE and then currently pursuing her MD in anesthesia uh, at Trichy College and uh, she is just writing her final exam and during this uh, pandemic period I mean she was one of the frontline warriors as part of the intern she was doing a lot of work uh, you know uh, taking care of the COVID patients. Now this is so satisfying I can go on and on and on. But I think, you know, because of the shortage of time, I'm stopping and I'm wishing all the scholars great future and uh, I wish I wish FFE uh, great success, uh, uh, everyone, and I want more and more people to volunteer and, and I want more and more donors to come forward so that many more uh, tens of thousands of people can benefit. And thank you so much and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harihara Nair and Mr. T. Srinivasan for your wonderful messages. We are in fact grateful to each one of our facilitators who are the backbone of our organization. And we are glad to have some of them with us here today. Let us now take a look at all our facilitators from Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry who are up on your screen now.
Today, we are also recognizing some of our facilitators from these states. I would request you all to please join me in congratulating them and cheering for them by sending messages on the chat boxes as their names are being called out. I would now request Dr. Sudha to take over, please. Thank you, Prathana. Um, this is indeed um, a real honor um, to be able to talk about the work of our facilitators. Uh, there's a very important saying that everyone wants to do something for somebody and nobody has really made it through life without someone's help. And I think we all fully understand and appreciate this. Um, Mr. Sumit Mitra has, has also mentioned exactly these same sentiments that all of us need someone's help in order to succeed. And today I'm pleased and honored uh, that several of our volunteer facilitators from Tamil Nadu are participating in this evening's event. We are making special mention of a few of you, uh, given the fact that every one of you has contributed significantly to our work. Uh, we will continue to rely on all of your services, for your dedication, your commitment, and sincerity with which several of you have served FFE, some of you for a couple of decades. We're truly gratified and honored that you're part of this event, uh, but we are making special mention of just five, and this is, uh, we, are, we are talking about just a certificate of appreciation. Please know that our thanks to you all knows no bounds. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to start by um, the first certificate, which is, next slide, please. Yes, to, uh, to Vasantamani S, Uma Maheshwari Ramesh, Satish Kumar P, our two alumni, Jambu L, who's an alum, and Ratina Sabapati, who's also an alumnus, all from Tamil Nadu. Thank you all for your continued services. You are the motivation uh, and play a very important role for bringing in the right students into the FFE fraternity. Thank you for all, all that you do for us. And we will continue to rely on your support as the organization grows. Thank you again. Thank you, Sudha. Once again, a big thank you to each one of you for making a difference in the world of our scholars through your selfless service, dedication, and commitment. Today, we also have with us several dignitaries from various colleges. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and being a part of this event. Coming up next, we have engineering scholars, Ramajayam, Ramya, medical scholar, Lavanya, law scholar, Sharanya, and B-Farm scholar, Nishant, sharing their experiences as an FFE scholar. Can we please have their messages? Good evening, everyone. I am Ramajiam from Dharmaburi district, Tamil Nadu. I am a final year student studying electronics and communication engineering in College of Engineering, India, Anna University. I am from a middle class family. My father is a farmer and my mother is a housewife. I have one elder sister and one elder brother. My elder sister got married. My elder brother is currently pursuing PhD in physics from Bharatiyasan University, Tamil Nadu. I studied in government school up to 10th standard. I scored 98% of marks in both 10th standard and 12th standard. I got 261st rank in Tamil Nadu engineering admissions and joined Anna University, one of the top engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. In the initial days of my college, I struggled a lot both financially and academically. As I am a Tamil medium student, it was difficult for me to study all my subjects in English. And the fees for my education was a huge burden on my family. That is when my friend told me about Mr. Agapati sir, a facilitator from FFE. When I reached out to him, he instructed me to apply for FFE scholarship. That is how I got to know about FFE. I am very grateful to Mr. Agapati sir, who is the reason for me to know about the FFE scholarship. FFE scholarship plays a vital role in my education. I cannot emphasize enough how much this scholarship is important to me and how it has changed my life. It creates a major impact on my education and career. I concentrate more on studies and less worry about my finances. Besides the financial help, FFE helps me to face my future. It makes me become industry ready by conducting many training programs. FFE's Hello English program helped me to develop my English and communication skills. 
space preparation courses, mentorship program, annual AMCAT exams and mock interviews helped me a lot to develop my skill set from basics and those programs gave me confidence in my personal life. It was such a wonderful experience to learn and connect with my mentor Mr. Trimal sir and his feedback and advice made me even better. I feel very prepared to face my upcoming placement interviews. I am now enthusiastically working on my projects and participating in coding challenges. I would like to thank my facilitator Mr. Ganeshan sir for helping me and guiding me over the years and I express my sincere gratitude to my donor Cargill Business Services India Private Limited. I will definitely contribute my part in FFP and I will definitely help the needy student in future just as FFP is helping me. I am proud of being an FFP scholar. Thanks. Have a wonderful evening. Hi everyone, this is Ramya from Krishnagiri, Tamil Nadu. I am in the final year of my aeronautical engineering degree in MIT and University, Chennai. I have two younger siblings. My sister is pursuing optometry in Emmanuel Blangeli Society, Uti. My father is a farmer and mother is a housewife. Of course, I am proud to be a farmer starter, but it's not that much easy for a farmer to financially support three children and family. So somehow I always wanted to reduce the pressure and concern. Thankfully, one of my seniors, who is also a FFA scholar, advised me to apply for the FFA scholarship. And I have applied for the scholarship. I have to say that it reduced my burden and helps to concentrate on my studies. Apart from financial support, it also helps to build myself for my better future and career by providing many skill development programs and trainings like Coursera program, Oracle, mock interviews, and many aptitude skills and trainings. I like to thank my donor, SNP Capital IQ India Private Limited, and my facilitator, the kind Tamil Rishi ma'am, who always been there for me and the whole FFP team. I like to become a successful person who make them proud and intend to make myself available for the FFP and the students like me. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all of you are doing good. I am Lavanya, studying third year MBBS in Madras Medical College, Chennai. I belong to a low middle class family of five members. My father is a driver, my mother is a housewife, my sister is studying a paramedical course and my brother is a 11th standard boy. I scored 96 percentage marks in my state board exams and my NEET state rank was 202. In the future, I wish to become a neurosurgeon and serve this society to the best of my knowledge. Through one of my relatives, I came to know about FFE. The FFE scholarship have helped me a lot to meet the expenses of my studies. Besides providing a financial support, it also helped my academics through the webinars conducted which was very useful for me. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my donor Mr. Prabharat sir and my facilitator Ms. Arul Murima because of whom I am getting all the benefits of FFE. In the future, I wish to support students like me as FFE did. Thank you FFE. A very warm welcome to all. I am Saranya and I am currently pursuing BCom LLB Honors degree from Tamil Nadu Dr. Ambedkar Law University which is located in Chennai. Moving on to my family background, I live in Chennai and we are five members in my family. My father is a tailor, my mother is a homemaker and I have two siblings. My elder sister is doing electronics and communication engineering and my younger brother is studying in class 7. My most favorite hobby is reading books, drawing and I am highly interested in playing badminton on weekends. I chose law because it helps me in improving my standard of thoughts, skills and knowledge and it also provides me the courage and support on which I can stand for the rights of others and my own. And uh, I will take up the Union Public Service Examination as soon as I graduate. My long term goal is to become a judge and I will continue to work hard until I get to where I want to. The fees to pay for the law course was so high and considering that I got introduced to FFE by Raghupati sir who had offered mentor scholarship during my school days. I would like to thank him for the same. And special thanks to my donor Mahesh Krishnamurthy sir for awarding FFE scholarship from my first year of law until now. And finally, FFE's financial generosity along with their continuous support and guidance has allowed my goal to go one step further. Just want to express my heartfelt gratitude towards the entire FFE team. 
hope one day I will be helping other students like me in achieving their goals, just like you have helped me. Thank you. Hello everyone, myself Nishan, first year B farm student at SNS College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Coimbatore. I belong to a small village called Pali Tunnel, located in the state of Tamil Nadu. We were fine in a family. My father is a man and my mother is a school. My younger brother is studying in class 12. I scored 94% in class 10 and 75% in class 12. My ambition is to shine well in research and development field after completing PG course. My hobbies are like playing cricket, watching games, listening to music. I heard about FFE through one of my friends in my village. I will support FFE in future as much as I can. The FFE scholarship amount is very much useful in my family's financial. Finally, I would like, I would like to thank my donors Mr. Chirak Patel sir and Mr. Kanu Patel sir and my facilitator Mr. Ganesan sir. Thank you FFE team. Thank you all. Thank you, dear scholars. We are very proud of you all and wish you the very best for your future. Moving on, this event will not be complete without recognizing our alumni whose time and support in all forms is deeply valued. We are thankful to all FFE alumni who are joining us today. We take this opportunity to celebrate and recognize our alumni champions of 2021 who have committed to support the organization in different ways be it through individual donations or helping us establish partnerships with other donors, helping us raise funds or uh, connecting us with other donors worldwide and or be it our star mentors and star facilitators. Please cheer for all our alumni champions who are up on your screen now. Thank you to all our alumni champions for your noteworthy and commendable efforts. Moving on to the last agenda, we have, a, we have wonderful video messages from our alumni, Mr. Arvind SR, Ms. Tarangani Krishnamurti, Mr. Selvaraj Ganeshan, and Ms. Ashwini T. Let us now listen to what they have to say. Hi everyone, this is Arvin from Chennai. I'm married and uh, I have a daughter who is about to turn two. Um, I'm currently working for a company called Synchrony Financial, which is a US based bank for the last nine years. And currently I'm serving as assistant vice president there. I'm gonna talk about my association with Foundation for Excellence. I was lucky to come across uh, Foundation for Excellence in the year of 1999 when I was studying my 10th. Uh, FFE really helped me achieve my dreams where and I got into a top engineering college in Chennai to pursue my B.Tech where FFE scholarship really helped me uh, bridge the financial gap that I was lacking at that time and with that that um, helped me as a stepping stone uh, to my success in my career pathing and I really wish uh, uh, the the same benefit should be available to other people deserving can uh, scholars who should make use of this opportunity to build their career path. In fact, the success and success gave me enough confidence that I started giving back slowly once I entered into my corporate uh, uh, role and ramp it to a point where currently I'm adopting a scholar. I would want to really thank FFE once again for the support they gave me and I'm proud to be associated with FFB in doing the same thing and giving it back in, term, in keeping the circle. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Tarangini. I completed my B.Tech in Information Technology from Raja College of Engineering and Technology, Madurai. Presently, I am working with Lennox International, Chennai as a supervisor of the ERP development team. Due to ill health, my dad had to take an early retirement. This came as a huge blow to the family as the family couldn't support me for my education. 
After my 12th standard, I was in a fix how I would continue with my education. However, at that time, through one of my very close friends, I got to know about FFE. FFE helped me complete my four years of education and definitely I owe this engineering degree to FFE. Soon after completing my education, after I joined an organization, I made it a point to contribute back to the organization that helped me the most. I have started doing that and I definitely request all of you, the FFE scholars who have taken the help of FFE to complete your education. It's time for you to give back. The circle of giving back starts now. The joy of giving is much more than the joy of receiving. I have also enrolled myself into the mentorship program. Not only that, I'm working with Lenox International CSR Committee to ensure that we are able to sponsor few FFE scholars for the education. Thank you for giving this opportunity to talk to you, expecting you to contribute back to the FFE organization. Thank you. Hi, my name is S. Ganesan. I was a FFE scholar. Now I am an alumni, a donor, as well as a facilitator. Hailing from a village called Jadarpalayam in Namakkal district of Tamil Nadu. Now I have gone all the way to become a rocket scientist working in DRDO, Ministry of Defense, Government of India. I did my schooling in my village and held a mechanical engineering seat at Regional Engineering College, Tiruchi. I did not know how to go and join because my family background is very poor. My father is a handloom weaver. At that time, uh, one facilitator from Chennai called Mr. R. Kumar has contacted me to support through FFE. If FFE has not supported me, I would not have continued my studies further. I take this opportunity to congratulate FFE and thank FFE for supporting me for continuing my studies. Hello all, this is Ashwini here. I am from Chennai and I work for KPMG Bangalore. I have about 8 years of experience in the banking industry. I am an engineer and also hold a postgraduate diploma in management. I received help and support from FFE right from school till graduation. My dad was working at a private firm and my mom was a homemaker at the time. The help from FFE helped us manage the financial situation at home. I recall reaching out to banks for educational loan and the banks had charged really high interest rates. But then FFE proved that head financial help to encourage bright students can go a long way in help building a better society. Ever since I started working, I have been part of the circle of giving and it gives me immense pleasure to bring change in the life of FFE scholars in whose place I have been myself. I don't think FFE just helped me build my career and education, but it also made me a responsible and graceful person to the society. Thanks a lot, FFE. Thank you, dear alumni. We truly appreciate the fact that you have stayed connected to FFE. Participants, a gentle reminder to please continue posting your questions in the Q&A box. It is indeed heartening to see more than 730 participants who joined us today, and this makes us feel both proud and humbled. And with this, we have come to the end of today's event. On behalf of the board, management, and team at FFE, I would like to thank each one of you for being with us today. This event was made possible only because of your support. Thank you, Mr. Sumit Mitra, for sharing your inspirational message with our scholars. Our sincere thanks to Ms. Lata Gopal Krishna and Ms. K. Saroja for joining us today. We truly appreciate the time spent with us this evening. I would also like to thank our respected dignitaries representing various colleges and feeder partners for your time and support towards FFE. Thank you, Mr. Hariharan Ayer and Mr. T. Srinivasan, FFE alumni, Mr. Arvind, Ms. Tarangini, Mr. Selvaraj, and Ms. Ashwini, FFE scholars, Ramajayam, Ramya, Lavanya, Sharanya, and Nishant for sending us your wonderful messages. Thank you, respected facilitators and mentors for your valuable time. A special thanks to all the students and alumni present here. And last but not the least, thanks to FFE's management for their continuous support 
and to FFE team for organizing this wonderful event. Thank you all once again.